Have you heard what happened to Susan Boyle? Susan Boyle, the remarkable talent discovered on Britain's Got Talent, soared to unprecedented success with her rendition of Both Sides Now from her third album, Someone to Watch Over Me. Despite not being an immediate frontrunner, Boyle's powerful and emotive voice captivated audiences, propelling her to stardom. Her journey didn't stop there. Winning America's Got Talent, the champions, could lead to a flourishing career and amass a fortune surpassing $45 million. Yet, at the height of her fame, Boyle chose to step away from the limelight. Stay with us, the famous people, as we delve into her story. Boyle's story is a testament to the idea that appearances can be deceiving and that talent knows no age. At 47, she challenged societal norms by auditioning for Britain's Got Talent, a move that could have easily gone unnoticed had she adhered to the conventional expectations set for her. The moment Boyle took the stage, her ordinary appearance misled the judges and audience, sparking skepticism and even ridicule among those watching. However, the moment she sang the first notes of I Dreamed a Dream, she silenced her critics, transforming skepticism into admiration and setting the stage for a life-changing career. This pivotal performance marked the beginning of Boyle's ascent to international acclaim, culminating in Grammy recognition and over 25 million records sold. Despite her success, Boyle's initial reception on Britain's Got Talent reflects a broader narrative of overcoming adversity. Having faced bullying throughout her school years and beyond, Boyle's path to fame is a classic rags-to-riches tale marked by both personal and public challenges, including a very public breakdown. Susan Magdalene Boyle was born on April 1, 1961, in Blackburn, West Lothian, Scotland, into a family of Irish immigrants. Boyle's upbringing was modest. Her father, Patrick Boyle, a World War II veteran turned minor, and her mother, Bridget, a shorthand typist, raised ten children on a tight budget. Despite the financial constraints, Patrick played a crucial role in nurturing Susan's musical talents. Witnessing her father's performances at the Bishop's Blaze, Susan Boyle found solace and inspiration in his melodious voice, igniting her own aspirations to conquer the music world and fill arenas with her voice. Yet beneath these dreams, Susan endured a deeply troubled relationship with her father, Patrick Boyle. While he was regarded as a family man, the scars of war had transformed him leaving him to grapple with anger that he, unfortunately, took out on his family. Susan, in particular, bore the brunt of this anger, facing physical abuse for minor provocations or whenever financial stress overwhelmed her father. This cycle of abuse persisted for years, casting a long shadow over Susan's childhood and early adult life. In 1997, Patrick Boyle's death after a serious illness marked a turning point. The final years of his life saw Susan assuming the role of caregiver, a period during which she began to reconcile with her father, despite the deep-seated trauma that remained. This complex relationship with her father, characterized by both care and conflict, significantly impacted Susan. She candidly shared how, through her journey to stardom and personal growth, she managed to release the resentment she harbored towards her father. This process of healing and forgiveness, albeit challenging, highlights the resilience and strength Susan Boyle carried into her music career, using her past not as a crutch, but as a stepping stone to achieve remarkable success. You're watching the video on the channel The Famous People. Don't forget to subscribe to support the team. Reflecting on her father's death, Susan Boyle spoke of the necessity of acceptance and maturity in the face of such a profound loss. She emphasized the importance of letting go of the past and embracing a new version of oneself, a journey she has been actively pursuing. Despite the mix of positive and negative memories, 
Boyle has been working towards coming to terms with her past, acknowledging that while her childhood was fraught with trauma, it did not extinguish her musical aspirations. Susan's early life was marked by adversity from the outset. As the youngest of ten siblings, her arrival came when her mother, Bridget, was 47 years old, an age considered late for childbirth, especially under their constrained circumstances. The birth was perilous, and Susan experienced a brief lack of oxygen, which was believed to have resulted in learning disabilities. It wasn't until later in her career that Susan discovered new insights about her diagnosis, shedding light on the challenges she faced from the very beginning. School years were particularly tough for Susan. The educational system, with its emphasis on quick learning and progression, left her feeling sidelined. In a candid interview, Boyle revealed the difficulties she faced as a slow learner in an environment that seemed to prioritize speed over understanding. This experience of feeling left behind and undervalued in her formative years was a significant hurdle, yet it did not deter her from pursuing her dreams. Susan Boyle's school years were marred by several challenges, including unprofessional treatment by teachers and relentless bullying by her peers. She endured a particularly harsh environment where corporal punishment was inflicted for academic struggles, a misguided attempt to address her learning difficulties. Boyle was frequently subjected to beatings with a belt by her teachers for failing tests or underperforming on class assignments. The bullying from her classmates compounded her misery, as they cruelly nicknamed her Susie Simple, hurling insults both in and outside the classroom. Reflecting on these experiences in an interview with the Daily Mail, Boyle highlighted how this relentless torment made school an unbearable chapter of her life, marking it as the worst period she had ever endured. The impact of the bullying extended beyond her school years, stifling her personal growth and complicating her academic and professional journey. Her participation in Britain's Got Talent served as a form of vindication against those who belittled her ambitions, proving them wrong in a grand and public manner. Boyle's performance of You'll See on her debut album became a powerful message to her bullies, showcasing her resilience and ultimate success despite their cruelty. Boyle revealed that alongside her learning disabilities, she also struggled with epilepsy, a condition that was poorly managed due to a lack of understanding and appropriate care from both her family and educators. The condition led to seizures at school, which only fueled further mockery and isolation. At home, her management of epilepsy was rudimentary and often neglectful, contributing to a generally unsupported and misunderstood aspect of her health. Boyle's transition from school to the workforce was fraught with difficulty, hampered by her undiagnosed learning disability and the stigma of her educational experiences. Despite applying to numerous jobs, she faced repeated rejections, eventually taking a short-lived position as a trainee cook. Her career prior to her breakthrough consisted mainly of performing at local venues, finding joy in music despite the absence of stability or recognition. This backdrop of adversity set the stage for Boyle's decision to chase a dream she had scarcely allowed herself to consider fully a decision that would lead to her unforgettable audition on Britain's Got Talent, a moment that would change her life forever. Boyle's journey from a challenging childhood and a series of personal and professional setbacks to global fame is a testament to her unyielding spirit and the transformative power of perseverance and talent. Susan Boyle's life was a testament to the virtues of forgiveness and selflessness. Despite the lack of warmth and support in her family life, Boyle maintained a steadfast belief in these values. She famously declared herself a romantic by heart during her Britain's Got Talent audition, yet humorously noted she had never been married, never been kissed, 
underscoring her modest and unassuming nature. After her father's death, she chose to stay in the family's four-bedroom council house to take care of her elderly mother, even after her siblings had moved away. She lived with her mother and her cat, Pebbles, in their childhood home, where she remains to this day, despite her considerable earnings as a globally recognized musical artist. This choice reflects her commitment to a modest lifestyle, rooted in the values she holds dear. In addition to her family responsibilities, Boyle found solace and purpose in her local church, where she volunteered and sang in the choir. Her contribution extended beyond singing. She also visited elderly church members, offering companionship and joy through conversation and music. These acts of kindness and her deep-rooted faith provided a stable foundation during the turbulent times in her life. Music was always a beacon of hope for Boyle, encouraged by her mother, Bridget. Despite facing rejection from recording labels, television producers, and radio channels, Boyle continued to share her gift of song within her church community. Her mother's unwavering support was a constant source of strength, even as Boyle considered abandoning her aspirations for a professional music career. Boyle arrived at the audition for Britain's Got Talent. Her decision to step onto that stage was not just an attempt to realize her own dreams, but also a tribute to her mother's belief in her talent. Susan Boyle's memorable audition was the culmination of years of perseverance, a moment that would catapult her from relative obscurity to international fame, all while staying true to the values of forgiveness, selflessness, and humility that defined her journey. In the midst of her remarkable performance on the Britain's Got Talent stage, Susan Boyle was grappling with the profound sorrow of her mother's recent passing. Bridget Boyle had died at the age of 91, leaving Susan heartbroken. Neighbors reported that Susan was so overwhelmed by grief that she remained secluded in her house for three days, unable to eat or communicate with the outside world. Despite suggestions to move on and perhaps even leave her mother's house for a fresh start, Susan staunchly refused, choosing instead to channel her grief into a renewed commitment to her music. This dedication was not without its challenges. Caring for her mother had significantly depleted Susan's emotional and physical energy, limiting her ability to pursue musical opportunities. Yet, she persevered, attending 12 auditions for various shows, including a previous attempt at X Factor, where she didn't progress to the audition phase. This setback, possibly due to her unassuming appearance and simple dress sense, did not deter her. Susan believed firmly that a musician's true role was to sing, not to conform to the flashy expectations of appearance that often accompany celebrity culture. Britain's Got Talent presented a unique opportunity for Susan, albeit one that initially seemed poised for failure. The audience and judges appeared skeptical, if not dismissive, of her chances, judging her by her appearance and doubting her aspirations to be as successful as Elaine Page. Simon Cowell's visible skepticism epitomized the challenge she faced. Yet Susan's performance of I Dreamed a Dream from Les Miserables stunned everyone, turning disbelief into admiration. Amanda Holden, one of the judges, later described the moment as a significant wake-up call for all present. For Susan, this performance was deeply personal. It served as a tribute to her late mother, a way to honor her memory and share the talent Bridget had always believed in. Though Bridget could not witness her daughter's success in person, Susan felt her mother's spiritual presence and support during that pivotal audition. This moment of vulnerability and strength not only marked Susan's emergence as a global sensation, but also underscored the timeless lesson of not judging a book by its cover. Susan Boyle's journey from mourning to triumph is a testament to resilience, talent, and the enduring power of a daughter's love for her mother. 
Susan Boyle's journey on Britain's Got Talent is a compelling narrative of transformation and triumph over skepticism. Initially, the audience's dismissive attitude towards her, influenced by her plain appearance, was stark. Yet, the moment she began to sing, the ambiance shifted dramatically. Her powerful voice left both the audience and judges in awe, bridging the gap between preconceived judgments and her undeniable talent. Susan's performance resonated far beyond the stage, sparking a worldwide surge of interest. Clips of her past performances, including a 1999 rendition of Cry Me a River, circulated widely online, amassing millions of views. Her audition video alone soared to over 100 million views, marking her as an international sensation. Despite the challenges she faced, including health issues and the pressure of sudden fame, Susan emerged as a standout contestant on Britain's Got Talent. Although she did not win the competition, finishing second to the dance group Diversity, Susan achieved something far greater. She won the respect and admiration of the public, fulfilling a personal battle for acceptance and proving that it is never too late to follow one's dreams. Susan's debut album, I Dreamed a Dream, released in November 2009, shattered sales records around the globe. In its first week, the album sold more than 2 million copies worldwide, making it one of the fastest-selling debut albums by a female artist ever. The overwhelming response continued, with the album topping Amazon's pre-sales and ultimately becoming the world's best-selling record of 2009, with over 9 million copies sold. Billboard highlighted the significance of this achievement, noting that I Dreamed a Dream marked the best opening week for a debut album by a female artist since Nielsen Soundscan began tracking sales. In 1991, Susan Boyle's unprecedented success with her debut album led to her recognition by the Guinness World Records for multiple achievements. She set records for the fastest-selling debut album by a female artist in the UK the most successful first week of sales, and becoming the oldest person to reach number one with a debut album in the country. This monumental success wasn't confined to the UK. Boyle also made significant inroads in America, a testament to her broad appeal and the universal resonance of her music. Her appearance on America's Got Talent was met with warmth and acceptance symbolizing a departure from her earlier experiences of doubt and underestimation. Boyle's career trajectory, post Britain's Got Talent, was characterized by a series of ambitious and successful projects. She released The Gift in 2010 and followed up with Someone to Watch Over Me in 2011. After a brief hiatus, she returned with Standing Ovation, The Greatest Songs from the Stage in 2013, a festive album that celebrated the joy of Christmas through song. Continuing her prolific output, Boyle released Hope in 2014 and A Wonderful World in 2016, each album underscoring her versatility and depth as an artist. Despite her relentless work ethic, Boyle decided to take an indefinite break from music, citing age and health concerns. However, true to her resilient spirit, she made a remarkable comeback in 2019 to celebrate a decade in the music industry with the album Ten, which encapsulated the essence of her musical journey. This album, like her previous works, was a testament to Boyle's enduring talent and her ability to connect with audiences around the world. Yet alongside her triumphs, Boyle's journey has been marked by personal challenges. Her fans observed the profound impact of her health diagnosis on her life and career. Despite these obstacles, Boyle has chosen to lead a quieter life, stepping back from the relentless pace of the music industry. Her preference for privacy and simplicity, even as she continues to create music that touches hearts, speaks to a deeper narrative of resilience in the face of adversity. Boyle's reflection on the enjoyment she derived from creating her album 10 highlights a fundamental truth about her approach to music and life. 
Success is not just about accolades and records, but about the joy of the creative process and the hope of bringing happiness to others. Beneath the surface of her global fame and professional achievements lies a story of personal strength, the power of music to heal and inspire, and the enduring impact of a woman who dared to dream big. The meteoric rise to fame that Susan Boyle experienced following her appearance on Britain's Got Talent came at a considerable personal cost. Thrust into the spotlight, Boyle found the rapid transition to fame overwhelming. The relentless schedule of interviews, media appearances, and the constant attention from paparazzi proved to be a stark departure from her previously private life. Despite her growing popularity and undeniable talent, the pressure of public scrutiny began to take a toll on her mental and physical well-being. After the finale of Britain's Got Talent, where she did not secure the win, Boyle was admitted to a hospital. Reports surfaced of a breakdown, exacerbated by the disappointment of not garnering enough public votes to win the competition. Tensions reportedly escalated to the point where Boyle exhibited distressing behavior towards the show's staff, an incident that culminated in her being taken to a mental health care facility. The public and media's intense focus on Boyle's breakdown sparked discussions about the responsibilities of television producers to their participants' welfare. It was revealed that there had been concerns regarding Boyle's mental and physical health leading up to the show's finale, raising questions about the balance between the pursuit of high ratings and the well-being of participants. Although Ofcom, the UK's media regulator, considered launching an inquiry into the matter, the idea was ultimately not pursued. This challenging period in Boyle's life served as a crucial learning experience, prompting her to reconsider the pace at which she engaged with her music career. Despite the intention to adopt a more manageable schedule, Boyle faced the reality of a demanding tour itinerary. Nonetheless, she continued to perform, driven by her commitment to her fans and her passion for music. In 2013, Susan Boyle received a life-changing diagnosis that corrected a long-standing misunderstanding about her cognitive abilities. Previously believed to have suffered brain damage due to oxygen deprivation at birth, Boyle discovered she actually has Asperger's syndrome, a condition on the autism spectrum. This revelation, while initially shocking, ultimately provided Boyle with a sense of relief and understanding about her unique way of navigating the world. For years, the misdiagnosis had colored her self-perception and experiences, especially during her academic years where she felt out of step with her peers. In an interview with The Guardian, Boyle expressed how the label of being brain-damaged had always seemed both cruel and inaccurate to her. The diagnosis of Asperger's syndrome offered her an explanation that resonated more deeply with her lived experience, suggesting that while she might approach things differently, she was not fundamentally damaged. Boyle hoped her diagnosis would foster greater kindness and understanding towards neurodivergent individuals, challenging societal perceptions, and encouraging a more inclusive attitude. The public's response to Boyle's openness about her Asperger's syndrome was overwhelmingly positive, with fans and critics alike showing their support. This authentic disclosure marked a significant moment in Boyle's life, highlighting the importance of understanding and acceptance of neurodiversity. However, this period also brought additional health challenges for Boyle. She was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, which forced her to make significant lifestyle changes, including giving up her comforting habit of consuming chocolate during stressful times. The onset of the COVID-19 pandemic added another layer of difficulty to Boyle's life. Like many around the world, she had to take extra precautions to protect herself from the virus, which meant isolating at home and pausing her music career. 
This hiatus lasted for about two and a half years, during which time Boyle was unable to collaborate with others in the music industry, delaying any plans for new albums. In 2010, amidst the whirlwind of her burgeoning career, Susan Boyle decided to invest in a new home with the earnings she had accrued from her music success. However, this period of personal achievement was marred by harassment from local troublemakers who targeted her new residence with vandalism and intimidation, throwing rocks and lit paper at her home. This distressing situation ultimately led Boyle to return to the safety and familiarity of her childhood home, passing her new house on to her niece. While this return was tinged with sadness over her experiences, it was another, more profound loss that prompted Boyle to take a hiatus from her career. In the lead-up to her 2015 comeback, Boyle faced the heartache of losing her sister, Bridie, to cancer at the age of 73. Bridie's death deeply affected Susan, as the two shared a close bond, with Bridie having been a pillar of support throughout Susan's life and career. Bridie stood by Susan during the intense periods of media scrutiny, offering both emotional support and a grounding presence amidst the whirlwind of success. Moreover, Bridie played a crucial role during a challenging time in Susan's personal life, particularly during a public feud with their brother, Jerry. The conflict with Jerry arose amidst the pressures and complexities that often accompany sudden wealth. Susan's decision to financially assist Jerry with $75,000 to support his struggling business led to tensions within the family. When disagreements escalated, Jerry publicly accused Susan of lying about a claim that he had threatened suicide if not given financial help, causing a rift between them. However, in a twist of fate, Susan's public breakdown at Heathrow Airport in 2016 became a catalyst for reconciliation, bringing the siblings back together and mending their strained relationship. In 2022, Susan Boyle faced yet another health challenge when she suffered a minor stroke, an event that significantly impacted her music career. Despite this setback, Boyle made a triumphant return to the Britain's Got Talent stage, 14 years after her initial audition that catapulted her to fame. This time, she performed alongside the West End cast of Les Miserables, marking a deeply emotional and special moment for her. She shared with the audience and later on Instagram that recovering from the stroke required extensive speech practice, especially to perform I Dreamed a Dream, the song that had become synonymous with her incredible journey. Despite the health obstacles she has faced, Boyle continues to pursue her musical interests though she has understandably taken a step back from the public eye. In addition to navigating the complexities of her health, Boyle has also opened up about personal aspects of her life, including her regrets about not having children and her relationship with an American doctor. The singer, who has always maintained a level of privacy about her personal life, revealed that their relationship had grown more serious over time. However, she has expressed no interest in marriage or in publicly disclosing more details about her partner. While fans eagerly await new music from Boyle, they also respect her need for privacy and her decision to navigate her career and personal life in a way that prioritizes her well-being. Boyle's legacy as a beloved figure in the music industry and an inspiration to many remains secure, as does the affection and support of her fans, who continue to celebrate her talent and contributions to the world of music. Show your support for this video by liking, and don't forget to subscribe to the Famous People channel and turn on notifications to not miss our latest videos. See you in the next videos.